the heads of schools, teachers, students, media representatives, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. As you are aware, the Honorable Prime Minister on 10th October uh, announced that the Ministry of Education, Heritage and Arts will re reopen schools for years 12 and 13 on 1st November 2021. The Honorable Prime Minister also announced that the reopening of the schools for the rest of the years will be announced by the Ministry at a later date. Today, I will brief you on the school term for years 12 and 13. The school term for year 12 and 13 is from 1st November to 28th January 2022. Now, if you are wondering about the Christmas and New Year break, well, the Christmas and New Year break will be from 23rd December to 3rd January 2022. And the schools will recommence on 4th, uh, 4th January 2022. Examinations for year 12 and 13 are scheduled to start on the 17th January 2022, which will be over two weeks. We expect the results to be out by mid-March 2022. This timing is based on the assumption that there will be no cyclones, given that this is the cyclone season. We will have to make the necessary adjustments to the school term if we are hit by any cyclone or any other Calamity. The Ministry is currently in dialogue with the universities on probable start dates for the 2022 academic year. Other tertiary institutions are also expected to reorganize the start dates to accommodate uh, this time frame. Ideally, the opening of the tertiary instit institution should allow adequate time from the date of announcements of the results to enable prospective students to enroll, taking into consideration scholarships and TELS decision. The Ministry of Health and Medical Services has confirmed that vaccination is not compulsory for students, but it is for their own safety and that of their families and friends that, that students should be vaccinated. The Ministry therefore has been encouraging students to get vaccinated. We currently have 35 teachers teaching years 12 and 13 who are stranded in Viti level and have to return to schools in Vanwa level. And another 30 teachers will need to move from Vanwa level to Viti level. These teachers are now preparing to return to their destination to complete their home quarantine requirements before the school reopen on 1st November. I'm pleased to announce that so far, 7,622 teachers are fully vaccinated, while 5,110 have had their first jab. Unfortunately, 130 teachers were terminated under no jab, no job policy. 64 teachers will be given their termination letter this week, as they have confirmed in writing that they will not get vaccinated. Another 150 teachers have requested time to get an exemption certificate from the Ministry of uh, Health and Medical Services. In total, we are looking at 300 and 344 teachers who will be terminated under no jab, no job policy. There are 4,387 teachers in year 12 and 13. 30 teachers who are teaching year 12 and 13 have decided not to get vaccinated and therefore they were terminated. We have replaced 24 teachers and six more will be replaced by early next week. The COVID safe protocol has been finalized and cleared by the task force made up of ministries of education and health that will also oversee the implementation of COVID safe school reopening guideline. Virtual training of head of school started yesterday so that they prepare school environment by adhering to health and safety measures. Ministry of Health and Medical Services will visit schools to check the facility before clearance will be given for students to enter uh, the school environment. We are mindful that many students and teachers will need psychosocial support and the ministry has been working with UNICEF and DFAT 
to provide refresher training for 35 counsellors who are put in clusters to provide psychosocial support. We also understand that 35 counsellors are not enough and therefore, in addition to this, starting next week, uh, school child protection officers will undergo training in psychosocial support services to further help students in their own school uh, environment. Ladies and gentlemen, masks are mandatory for students. It must be worn indoors and in crowded spaces outdoors. Students are expected to wear good quality masks that are multi-layered and comfortable and must cover mouth and nose. Homemade masks are fine as long as they are multi-layered and made from cloth that is comfortable and suitable for hot and moist uh, environment. Hand washing uh, with soap and clean water is necessary. Most schools have wash facilities and reg regular hand washing with soap and clean water will need to be practiced. Schools will also have sanitizers to use. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm urging head of schools to use the time between now till 31st October to prepare the school environment and classrooms to welcome their students. Students have missed face-to-face -face teaching and learning in a classroom setting for almost six months. And now is the time for us to bring them back to school and that too with all safety and care. Schools have their free education grant to use and to make all necessary arrangements for safe reopening of schools based on COVID safe school reopening protocol. Heads of schools can seek guidance from the divisional and district offices in their preparation, as well as they can seek guidance from the Ministry of Health, as Ministry of Health has been running some of this training uh, for them. The Ministry of Health and Medical Services has been carrying out vaccination for students above the age of 15, and the vaccination program is continuing, and I urge more students to get vaccinated. The Ministry, in partnership with all heads of school, staff management, and parents, should be able to create a viable environment that conforms to COVID-19 safety protocols to ensure that our students are cared for in the safest way. I urge all our head of school, teachers, parents and guardians to work together in ensuring that our years 12 and 13 students are back to school and they are prepared well for the examination on the dates announced. So ladies and gentlemen, the information I have provided is for years 12 and 13 returning to classes and the timing of the exams. I will also be announcing details of restart of classes for other years in due course. My team and I will be happy to uh, answer any of your questions or any clarification that you need for the resumption of uh, classes for years 12 and 13. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, as you know, uh, there is a timeline, and the timeline was already set that they had to have their first jab by 16th August and the last jab by October 31st. They've taken their first jab. Now we, are, we will see whether they meet the 31st October deadline or not. If they meet the 31st October deadline, then it's all good. If they don't, then obviously they're not in line with the law. I'm Tessa from uh, Fiji TV. Um, I believe some students uh, from the Maritime Islands, uh, Maritime Zones are still here in uh, Viti Levu since the uh, Coca-Cola Games uh, last year. Has there been any arrangement done by your office for their return to their schools and perhaps their, their homes? Uh, some uh, teachers are moving to the Outer Islands and my permanent secretary, uh, she's been talking to Ministry of Health as well as Ministry of Commerce to make arrangement for them to move to the Maritime uh, Islands. But you'll be surprised to note that there are some teachers who are also 
in, in the central division and then they have not moved to the western division uh, for no good reason. So we are trying to even give very clear directive that they must move to the schools. What about the students that uh, came for those uh, meets, the Coca-Cola Games and the Maritime Zones that are still here? Yes, obviously, uh, if the schools reopen, and that's why I'm not announcing the dates for other uh, classes as yet, because we need to uh, ensure that all these kids are back into the uh, area uh, of residence. Uh, do you still plan on having sports next year, considering the time limitations you may face? Sports next year uh, depends upon next year when. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, from what I have presented, uh, you have gauged that, the, that this particular term will finish in January and then followed by exams and examination results and so forth. Obviously, Till uh, April, there is no room for sports. Anything after April, we can consider, and, and this discussion we must have with the sports bodies. For students, uh, majority of uh, parents have lost their job during this pandemic period. Does the ministry or the government have any form of assistance for those students? I think the assistance provided by the government is quite sufficient. Uh, government has been paying for the school fees, the tuition fee. Uh, we have been paying for all the textbooks, uh, bus fare. So all these assistance are still in intact. Nothing has been taken off. However, if the students need any other assistance, that will be gauged during um, during the assessment period that we have allocated. And this is where the teachers uh, will assess and they will come back to the ministry. And for those other grades that will resume next year, you think that they will only be undergoing uh, assessments? Would it be an open book assessment or do they have to continue with their worksheets and etc.? Uh, the, the idea for that assessment, as I had clarified earlier on, is really not to make the child, uh, to hold back the child just because he or she will not pass that assessment. That assessment has got a very specific purpose and the purpose here is to gauge their strength and weaknesses so that the next teacher who receives him or her will be in a better position to focus on the weak areas and work in that area so that uh, uh, total uh, education uh, is provided to the child. So in terms of whether it will be open book uh, or uh, an assessment, um, that would be decided by the, by the schools themselves. But we are encouraging that it should be a normal school year. Right? It should be normal for, for the child to know how exams, uh, papers are prepared and how they sit for an exam. We don't want to lose that because this exam that we're talking about or the assessment we're talking about for, for years 11 to 1, in no way it will decide uh, whether the child can move into next level or not. Since all of them are moving to the next level, it's better for them to experience an environment situation, I mean an examination environment for them to experience here. Yeah. That's the whole purpose. Just my last one. We've had teachers who have been involved in national duties. If you can just uh, state what sort of national duties were they and if that's going to continue for teachers that have been uh, assisting the health ministry during this uh, pandemic period. I mean, teachers have been involved in uh, national duties and I thank them most sincerely uh, for their assistance. Uh, despite being involved in the national duties, they've also been uh, uh, preparing the worksheets and conducting uh, sessions through Zoom, etc. They're doing additional work as well. Uh, this will uh, obviously stop when, when the schools uh, start, um, you know, when face-to-face -face classes resume, then this will stop.
for boarding school students, what are the plans uh, if, in case if some students are not vaccinated and those who are vaccinated, how will the teachers ensure that they don't uh, mix or what sort of measures will be put in place to ensure safety of others? Yeah, the measures are no different than what we experience in our workplace. Same measures are being introduced even in school environment or in boarding uh, schools. Uh, mask is mandatory, social distancing, uh, distancing will be there. We are focusing on ventilation uh, just to purify the air and, and clear the air. Uh, all that will uh, take place. So the COVID uh, safe uh, school reopening uh, guideline clearly states and gives direction uh, to the head of schools as to how they need to prepare, uh, you know, even if students are returning to boarding schools or uh, otherwise. So ma'am, you won't separate students who are not vaccinated in those? We will not discriminate any child because, as you have heard from the Ministry of Health, uh, vaccination is not mandatory for students. Um, have you had any discussions uh, with your senior officers about projects for the kids for year 12 and 13? Will that be part of the assessment for the external exams? I will ask the permanent secretary to respond to that. In the education delivery sections, actually looking at it, the students had started their projects in term one, and uh, for some of the projects, um, they had actually completed quite a bit of it. And because we did not know when schools were going to start, we had put projects on a hold. Now that students are going back, my colleagues are working on seeing how we can bring some of those projects back because they are an integral part of normal teaching. So we will make that uh, decision in the next week or so and inform heads of schools. Thank you. Yes, we have a date, but we cannot do the announcement yet. Uh, I do not wish to give a date, and then we are not able to adhere to that date, because that's going to create more confusion. But my message to the parents is that they need to prepare uh, their, their children so that they can go back to school. We will be making an announcement, and it is subject to the vaccination rate. Um, we just want more school kids to be vaccinated. And as you know, the vaccination is uh, going on for year 15, uh, 15 year old, right up to 18 year old. And we are also waiting for uh, vaccines to come in so that our year 12, uh, you know, 12 year old and above can get vaccinated. So all that is in plan. And we're just hoping that uh, this can be rolled out by uh, Ministry of Health subject to availability of vaccines. So the reason why we are not announcing is purely based on that. Because on one hand we, we are saying that vaccination is not mandatory, but we want to make sure that the classroom, that they sit in more and more school children are vaccinated. Disaster management today released the outlook, the tropical, size, tropical cyclones is an outlook for 2021-2022. I'm expecting about one to three cyclones for the period and at least two will be severe. Um, I noted that you mentioned that you, you um, this the schedule that you released is does not account for the, this, the forecasted cyclone. Look, I mean, disruptions, no one would know better than Ministry of Education what it means when the cyclones come our way. There's always disruption to uh, school uh, and, and also disruption to teaching and learning. Sometimes uh, some of the schools are used for evacuation, as evacuation centers. We, are, we, are, we all know this, right? So in this, for, for next year, even if the cyclones come, it's nothing new for us. We have to do the same thing, which is, first, the priority is safety of people. 
and we have to ensure that people are safer. If, if the homes are not safe, that they need to be evacuated. And uh, looking at the severity of the damages that may happen on the ground, then again, we have to go back and uh, relook at the dates. So these dates, as I said, uh, is not subject to cyclone. So if we have cyclone, the dates can change. And I'm just crossing my finger. I mean, we had enough problems in our lives, and the last thing we want is a cyclone, which is, again, it's not in our hands, right? Any other question? If none, then I thank you most sincerely for being here and for taking this message across to our parents as well as to our students who are anxiously waiting for the school reopening. Thank you. Good night,